Hey, everybody. Welcome to Friday Afternoon here at the Pace Studios in New York City. Uh, we are here with a very special guest today, uh, Josh Abbott from the Josh Abbott Band. And uh, he is joined today by Preston Waite on fiddle and Austin Davis on banjo. Guys, thank you so much for coming down and playing some songs for us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Uh, you guys got a new record out. Uh, it's coming out uh, a little bit later this month, next week, I think. Absolutely. It's called uh, Until My Voice Goes Out. And you're going to play a couple of songs, three songs, uh, from that record for us today. And in addition to that, we actually are going to give away a signed copy of the record uh, oh, by, cool. from Josh. Uh, so for everyone tuning in on Facebook today, just leave a comment uh, in this stream, and that will enter you to win the CD. And uh, we're excited about that. So, so you're going to play a few songs from, uh, for us from that record. Let us know about the first one you're going to do for us today. Sure. Uh, well, we thought we'd open up with the title track to the new album. Uh, it's called Until My Voice Goes Out. Uh, it's just a song really um, about doing what you love until you can't anymore. You know, so for me, it's singing until my voice goes out. For, for some people, it might be, you know, running marathons or just doing fly fishing, whatever it is that you love to do. Do it passionately, uh, do it actively, and do it until you can't do it anymore. And it's really, you know, it's metaphorical. Probably it has kind of a bigger meaning. You know, live life the way you want to live it until yeah. you're not here anymore. And um, <clears throat> you know, my father, he died earlier this year, and um, I was really happy to get to play him this song right before he died. It was the last song he heard on this earth, right. and uh, he smiled, and that was a really cool moment for our family. So uh, I hope that, this, that people really enjoy this song. It means a lot to me and my band. And um, anyway, this is called Until My Voice Goes Out. Great. I want to sing my songs till my voice goes out I want to take every day and live it loud Friends who are friends through the lows and the highs I want them all to live long and healthy lives I want to write more stories than can ever be told I want a silver lining and a pot of gold And a second chance when I make mistakes Amen And to give way more than I ever take And I want you holding my hand Lover and my best friend I want you telling me I'm yours up until the whole thing ends sounds simple but it couldn't be more true I want you I want to lay down under the northern lights and even when it's hard, I want to do what's right I want to sail and feel the wind in my hair I want a whole lot of truth and a little bit of dare And I want you holding my hand Lover and my best friend I want you telling me I'm yours Up until the whole thing ends Sounds simple, but it couldn't be more true I want you I want you And for you to know, I'll never let you go I want you Holding my hand, lover and my best friend 
Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. That was that was beautiful. Thanks a lot. Um, so you know, you mentioned uh, before that song. Uh, you know, your your father passed away while you were making this record. Uh -huh. um, I know also your your first child was born uh, at some point during the making this record, maybe shortly after. Um, and so that's a lot. That's a lot of life to happen during the making of one a one record. And I was wondering, like, I mean. Obviously, nothing that momentous, I would imagine, has sort of occurred in your life as you're making previous music. Right. So when you encounter these kinds of things in your life, I'm wondering, like, do they just automatically, you know, they just seep into everything you're doing? Or, they you know, do. Like, how, do you, how do you sort of make them part of your artistic flow and not just sort of have them overwhelm you, you know? Right. You know, well, it's all so new, you know, that I'm still writing. I'm still trying to, like kind of absorb it and really process it the right way so that I can write about it without breaking down or, you know, writing something that I'm, you know, might not want to write. So, um, but on the new record, there's a song called I'm Your Only Flaw. And uh, that's a song that I wrote for my fiance when she was just my girlfriend. And kind of in turn now, it's about our baby girl too. You know, when I wrote that song, I didn't know that she was going to be like two months pregnant at the time. So it's really neat uh, to be able to, you know, have that song for them on the album. And, you know, and, and as far as my dad goes, you know, like I said, I didn't write that last song for my dad. I'd written it way before. But because of his passing and, and it happening while we were in the studio recording the album, it really took on a new life. It's almost like I wrote that song, you know, two years ago for that moment yeah. without knowing it. Yeah. And and, and, I, and that's how I just kind of um, process it, and uh, it makes me smile. It makes me think that there was a greater good, you know. I'm not sure what that is, but something out there had me write that song for that moment that would be so huge for me and my family. And uh, and then at the very end of the album, we actually have a couple songs. It's kind of a outro, and it's our nod to my dad, kind of a goodbye to him, and uh, uh, very personal you know, moments on that album. And it's uh, definitely an album, you know, how do you write that script? It's almost like a movie, you know? Yeah. All that was part in of the what studio. Was... You get the phone call. Your dad has a stroke. You got to go leave and then, you know, have a baby as well. It, 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 it was bizarre, but yeah. um, it's life and you just have to kind of take it as it comes. And so in, in, in writing a record or, you know, now you're touring on it and you're releasing it, like, you know, is this something that, changes you as a performer as a songwriter as a singer as you go forward i mean you may never have another record with this much you know sadness and happiness and just i hope everything. not yeah. you know i mean the, the the last album that we had done was kind of built around tragedy and this album of course you just kind of knocked on our doorstep with life and death and the, the, the irony was when we went into the studio process before any of that, before I knew that I was going to have a baby, before my dad had a stroke, this album, when I explained it to the guys and the producer, was it's about life and the rediscovery of life. What does that mean as an adult? I want this album to have just a good vibe to it where it's all about falling in love with someone and being vulnerable and realizing that you're flawed, but someone can love you anyway, and spending, times with, spending time with your friends and your family. 
and then it just took on a whole new meaning, meaning through um, life and death events. And I think we're already, uh, hopefully in a couple of years when we do the next album, it can just be normal. It can just be like a normal record and not nice. something that's like bringing people to tears. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, well, um, in that vein, tell us uh, a little bit about this, uh, this next song you're going to do from, from the record. Well, I feel like we should do, you know, as a nice segue, the song I just mentioned, um, the song that I wrote about uh, my fiancé. Um, and I had written poetry, and that's not something I do all the time, so I don't want to make it sound like I'm you know, some, the next great poet, but I do sit down sometimes and just write to just write and not necessarily be melodic and have songs. And I was writing with a friend of mine on a camping trip, and he asked what I had, and we were kind of shooting back ideas back and forth, and, and I found that piece of poetry I had written about her months prior, and I read it to him, and I was like, man, that really does sound like the first verse to a cool song, doesn't it? And he was like, yeah. So we ended up writing the song that night. It's called I'm Your Only Flaw. And what's great about the song, too, and have the meaning behind it. In the second verse, one of my fiance's favorite lines is a song, uh, there's a line that says, being brave while feeling small. And so my brother, to, to, to backtrack this a little bit, my brother just had a baby as well in January. He beat me to it by a few months, his first one. He had a little baby girl, and they named her Isley Dawn, which means cheerful beginnings. And I thought, well, it'd be cool if we have a daughter to name her something like that. And we really liked the word brave. So we looked up girl names, and Emery was a girl name that means brave. And then so I was like, brave what, brave what? And we like, brave adventure. That's what it's going to be, right? Like we're having a daughter. And so uh, a female name that means adventure is Farron. And so her name's Emery Farron. So, you know, I, because of this song, um, you know, I, I have a baby and her name is named after it in a way. And I think that's a really cool story. Yeah. Take it and away. hopefully she'll like the song as she gets older. <laughs> <laughs> she'll have to. She'll kind of have to, right? Yeah. Uh, let me make sure I'm in tune here. Yeah, the, my tuner. tuner went out that happens uh you know technical difficulties happen sometimes yeah yeah hey we all just do my it tuner by ear, went out by right when i was here, you know we play it by ear literally well one of the worst things you can do is have a lead singer tune the guitar and tell everyone they're playing f- uh, in tune with him <laughs> that like really starts to scare people so anyway <clears throat> this is called i'm your only fall law i'm your only flaw <laughs> oh my goodness When I think of happiness, innocence and truth in an almost perfect person, that's when I think of you. Now when I say almost perfect, believe me I'm in awe, because my dear, the way I see it, I'm your only flaw. I'm your only imperfection Dust in a diamond Rust on a heart of gold in the clouds When the sun ain't shining Well, I'm not sure why you love me I'm not sure what you saw Because, my dear, the way I see it I'm your only flaw When I think of goodness smile it's like having coffee with a friend you ain't seen in a while when I think of courage and being brave while feeling small baby I'm not worthy I'm your only flaw I'm your only imperfection dust in a diamond rust on a heart of gold clouds when the sun ain't shining well i'm not sure why you love me and i'm not sure what you saw because my dear the way i see it i'm your only flaw on the banjo Yeah. 
song All because, my dear, the way I see it I'm your only flaw Yeah, because, my dear, the way I see it I'm your only flaw Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. There's thousands of people in here, and only four clapped. Yeah. Well, actually, the place holds 900, so it's a little under, <laughs> a little under nine, a little under a thousand. Standing room, though. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about uh, the music on the record. Um, you know, I know that uh, on this record there there are more horns or string sections mm -hmm. in, in ways you haven't used before. Um, I, you know, I was listening to songs like uh, Texas Women, Tennessee Whiskey, yeah. and Kind of Missing You. These, they have like a real kind of soul sound to them with the horn sections that I don't believe you've really used to that effect before. And I was wondering not just about your inspiration for using them, but, you know, we actually we had Lady Annabella in here a few weeks ago. Yeah. They've got horns on their new record. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, last year, Sturgill Simpson made a great record with yeah. horns and strings all over it. One of the it. best albums ever. Um, and so, you know, I'm wondering, like, you know, this seems like something that's kind of infusing country music these days, a little bit more, more instrumentation in ways that we haven't heard all the time. And I'm wondering, like, how you see that kind of coming around and, and how it affects the, the scene that you play in? You know, you, you see a lot of your peers sort of turning this way these days? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I still think it's a very bold choice. Uh, you know, when we decided to use horns and strings, I, I was actually, last December, I was at dinner with our producer, and we were just kind of talking about some ideas for the next record. We kind of bouncing stuff off each other, and, you know, one thing led to another that led to another, and we decided we wanted to do strings. And I said, you know, They'll sound beautiful, but we can't do a whole album with strings. I mean, I feel like we do so much upbeat stuff that I'm not sure how the strings will fit into that. And I was like, what if we do horns and strings? <laughs> and it was kind of like, oh, yeah, that'll be awesome. Of course, when I told the band that, they thought I was crazy, you know, because I think his reaction was, how are we going to do an album with horns and, and banjo and make it yeah, palatable for record, people like, to listen to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so... So we were, I was like, just, I think this is going to work. I think like, let's make a song like we normally make it. And then the icing on that cake will be for the ballads and the, and the, the feel good songs will be the strings, you know, this quartet. And then the horns will bring in that just soul, like yeah, you said, that's yeah. a, you know, and into the fun songs and make you just want to dance even more. And that's what they did. We feel really great about the album, and we love the concept so much. We wanted the fans to get that at the live show, so we're actually bringing out a three-piece horn section and a two-piece string section, a cello and a violin, to complement our band on the road for this tour now. So it'll uh, everything that people listen to on the album, you'll get to hear that live. And is this something that you think is you know you can see becoming part of your your formula, or this is really kind of a special occasion to have this kind of instrumentation? I think it's special. So I, I believe if we do it again, it would be like, I just think it'd be too much, right? This was a fun venture for us to try to grow artistically and to do something fun and different. But, I, I, you know, the next album, I think we'll do something else. Yeah. And I don't know what that'll be, you know. Um, who knows? 12 people on stage is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and expensive, you know, when you start talking about two tour buses and adding five or six extra people on this on the payroll it starts to really drain the finances so but we thought it would be really cool for this tour and we felt like if we didn't do that it would be not fair to the fans right to fall in love with the these songs yeah. as they're represented and then not get to ever hear them that way so we hope everybody comes to the live show this fall and this winter because that's probably the tour you know that's probably the tour with the strings and horns and if you don't see it then you don't ever get to see it right all right, cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, this last song you're going to do for us today from the record. Well, I think the guys wanted to do a song called Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, you know, which stands for WTF. And I, I went, I wrote this song with a friend of mine in Nashville. His name is Rodney Clawson. He's another Texas guy, but he's lived up there forever, and he's written so many great songs. And I basically said, you know, here's the idea, and it's it's a song about a guy who's having a really bad day. And all he wants to do is just go to his favorite bar and sit in his favorite chair and drink his favorite cold beer, and his day just continues to get worse. And he doesn't want to cuss. He's trying not to cuss. 
So how does he express the way he feels? And, uh, you know, I, we went back and forth on this song because we're really trying to grow as a band and we don't want to do songs that are necessarily too mainstream or commercial because we feel like the wheelhouse that we really excel in is kind of just outside of that. But um, it's, you know, we really thought about it. It's okay to write a fun song. <laughs> it's okay to write a song that people laugh and smile at. It doesn't always have to be sad, depressing, right? And I think that we as critical artists, we always want like the deep stuff. And, you know, the deep stuff's great. And every now and then you need that break from that. So we put this song on the album. The horns sound awesome on it. And who knows, this could end up going to radio. So the irony there. But um, anyway, this is... Uh, this is called Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. That's kind of tune. <laughs> Got off late, was trying to get off early. Old lady at the light just flipped me the birdie. I got pulled over cause I was in a hurry Well, thanks a lot, officer, good day, just great Now I'm later than I was And all I really wanted was to catch me a buzz I finally got there, but somebody's in my chair I'm doing my best, trying not to swear But whiskey, tango, foxtrot Why the hell not say what I'm thinking? When I'm drinking, it's hard to stop But once I start, like the guy next to me Talking off my ear, but I just came in here To have a cold beer, but guess what? It's not, it's hot Whiskey Tango Boxtrot Well, my ex walks in with her new boyfriend and let's just say it wasn't a happy ending I'll take it as a sign for me to leave But I can't find my keys Jeez, whiskey, tango, foxtrot Why the hell not say what I'm thinking? Cause when I'm drinking, it's hard to stop But once I start, like the guy next to me Talking off my ear, but I just came in here to have a cold beer and unwind Until closing time But my cards declined Whiskey Tango Foxtrot And I walk outside to my truck are locked inside just my luck what the whiskey tango box trot why the hell not say what i'm thinking cause when i'm drinking it's hard to stop but once i start like the guy next to me talking off my ear but i just came in here to have a cold beer but guess what it's not. It's freaking hot. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Six people, 100% applause. <laughs> It's a hit. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, so the record is Until My Voice Goes Out. It and is. again, uh, for everyone tuning in today, we got a, a copy of the record signed by Josh. Uh, just leave a comment in the comment section. You're entered to win. We'll get in touch with one of you and send you out the record. Uh, guys, congratulations on the, on the record. And Thank good luck you. on tour. I know you're heading back down south now. 
for some dates? I yeah, you know, I think the tour starts off down in Texas. Um, you know, we picked this release date, or I did really, because of my dad's birthday. Mm-hmm. It's da- this album's dedicated to him. There's a special tribute to him in the album artwork. And um, his birthday is the 19th, and this album comes out the 18th. So it'll be special to be home in Texas. I've got some family that are coming out to our shows both nights. And uh, and then eventually, you know, the tour, um, we, we go out to the West Coast. We put some California dates in Vegas. Uh, we'll be in the Midwest and then in even November we'll be all over the southeast and the northeast so we're all over the map um we're very excited the horns I'm telling you they're awesome they've the the horn band that we're using they're called the Groove Line that's who recorded with us but they're the backing band for uh Zach Brown band and Jason Mraz and they they actually just did some stuff for Bruno um I know I just dropped a lot of names out there but (laughs) Uh, we're so excited that they're going to tour with us this fall. And our string section, they're incredible as well. So uh, it's going to be a really fun and different show. We hope everybody out there will come check it out. And uh, that's probably it from us. Thank you for having us today. Yeah, thank thanks you Thanks for doing what you guys do. This is cool. Yeah, it's our pleasure, man. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, Austin, Preston, Josh, uh, good luck out on the road. Thanks for stopping by the Pace Studios and come back anytime. All right, deal.